<laughs> Gigabox! Hi, I'm Sunny. Thanks for watching this video. You can help support our channel by hitting that subscribe button. You can also visit our website, gigglebox.tv, to stay up to date with all our videos and cool merchandise. Enjoy the video. Bye. This is the story of Jack and the Beanstalk. Once upon a time, there was a boy named Jack who lived with his mother in a tiny cottage in the countryside. They were very poor and the only thing they owned was a very old cow. One day, Jack's mother said, I'm afraid our old cow will no longer give milk. We will have to sell her so we can buy food. Jack, take her to the market and see what you can get. Yes, mother, said Jack, as he headed down the country lane with the old cow to see what she would fetch at the market. But it was a very long walk from Jack's home in the countryside all the way to the market. So Jack decided to take a shortcut through the forest. Well, hello there, said a croaking voice. Jack jumped in surprise at the sound and he saw an old traveller sitting upon a tree stump. Where are you headed, my boy? Our cow no longer gives milk, Jack told the man. So I'm taking her to the market to see what I can get. You know, my boy, it's a very long way, and you won't get much for that old cow, but I'll give you something for her. The old man held out his hand. How about these five magic beans? Magic beans? Even though the beans didn't look very magical, Jack thought they sounded very exciting. So he gave the old man the cow, and he took the beans home to show his mother. Jack! His mother exclaimed back so soon. What did you get for our old cow? Look, mother. Jack thought his mother would be very pleased to see what he had gotten. I traded our old cow for five magic beans. But she was not at all happy with him. Silly boy. She scolded. Now we have no cow and no money. She took the five beans and she tossed them right out the window. Then she sent Jack straight to bed. The next morning, Jack awoke and looked out his window at the bright sunny day. Then he jumped up in surprise. Oh my. Right outside their cottage, a giant beanstalk had sprouted up from the ground and it stretched all the way into the clouds. Jack was a very curious boy and so he began to climb the beanstalk. Higher and higher he climbed until his little cottage was just a tiny dot far below him. Still higher he climbed until his head poked through the clouds. And still he climbed higher, where he was very astonished to find a road sitting upon a particularly fluffy cloud. He followed the road and it led him to a beautiful, enormous stone castle. By the time he reached the castle's gate, Jack's tummy was rumbling. Not only was he very hungry, but he was still very curious. So he knocked on the tall wooden door of the castle. Hello. A woman answered. She was the tallest woman Jack had ever seen. She towered over him so high that she did not even notice tiny Jack far below her. Excuse me, said Jack. I've traveled very far and I haven't had any breakfast. Oh, said the giant woman in surprise as she looked down at him. Well, we don't get many visitors here. Please come in, but you must be quick. My husband will soon be home and if he sees you, You'll be his breakfast. The giant woman led Jack into a huge kitchen where she fed him eggs and sausage and toast and all sorts of delicious food. He ate and ate until he was quite full and very happy. Thank you, said Jack. That was very delicious, but I really should be getting home. Jack paused because just then he heard rumbling footsteps that made the castle floor shake. Oh no, said the giant woman. My husband is home. Quickly, hide in the cupboard. Jack jumped into the cupboard just as the giant came in. He had a long, scraggly beard and his mouth was twisted in an angry scrowl. Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell the blood of an Englishman. Don't be silly, said the giant woman. You smell the eggs and sausages I've made for breakfast. The giant sat down and ate while Jack hid in the cupboard and watched. When the giant finished his breakfast, he said to his wife, 
Now bring me my hen. The giant woman placed a beautiful red hen on the table. Lay! And the giant roared. To Jack's astonishment, the hen laid a perfect egg and it was made of solid gold. As soon as the giant and his wife left the kitchen, Jack crept out of the cupboard and over to the table to get a better look at the hen that laid the golden egg. Please help me, said the hen. Jack jumped in surprise. You can talk? Yes. And that giant is very cruel. Every day he forces me to lay him a golden egg. Please take me away from here. Jack couldn't say no to a talking hen who laid golden eggs. OK, but we must be quick and we must be very quiet. He took the hen in his arms, ran out of the castle as fast as he could and together they scrambled down the beanstalk. Thank you, said the hen when they reached the bottom. How can I ever repay you? Well, you can come live with me and I won't ever force you to lay eggs. The hen was very happy with this. And so was Jack's mother when she saw the magical talking hen. The hen only laid eggs when she wanted to. And Jack and his mother lived very well from the gold. But one day, as Jack was playing outside, he heard a strange noise. It sounded as if someone was singing, but it was very far away. Jack looked all around, but he didn't see anyone. Then he realised that the singing was coming from above him, up on the beanstalk. And because Jack was such a curious boy and he wanted to know who was singing, he climbed up the beanstalk once again. He climbed until he reached the sky and he found the road in the clouds and he followed it to the great big castle, just as he did before. He knocked on the tall wooden door. Hello. The giant woman answered, but this time, she did not look so kind when she saw Jack. You must go away. The last time you were here, my husband's hen disappeared. But I must know who's singing. Jack tried to say, but the giant woman shut the door in his face. Jack still wanted to know who he heard singing, so he snuck into the castle through a window and he hid in the cupboard while the giant woman cooked her husband's dinner. Soon he heard rumbling footsteps that made the whole castle quake. Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell the blood of an Englishman. The giant bellowed. Don't be silly, said the giant woman. You smell the steak and potatoes I've made for dinner. The giant sat down and ate while Jack hid in the cupboard and watched. When the giant finished his dinner, he demanded, Now bring me my harp. The giant woman placed a beautiful golden harp on the table and the giant shouted, Play! To Jack's astonishment, the harp began to play and sing a gentle lullaby. Soon the giant was asleep and his wife left the kitchen. Jack crept out of the cupboard and over to the table to get a better look at the harp that could play by itself and sing. Please help me, said the harp. Jack jumped back in surprise. You can talk? Yes. And that giant is very mean. Every night he forces me to play him a song so he can sleep. Please take me away from here. Jack couldn't say no to a singing harp that played itself. OK. He said. But we must be quick and we must be very quiet. He took the harp in his arms, ran out of the castle as fast as he could and together they began scrambling down the beanstalk. But as soon as the harp stopped playing, the giant awoke. When he saw his harp was gone, he roared in anger and chased after Jack. Fee, fi, fo, fum. He quaked. Mother! Jack shouted down the beanstalk. Get the axe! As soon as he reached the ground, Jack swung the axe and began to cut down the beanstalk. The giant saw that it would soon fall, so he climbed back up to his castle into the clouds as quickly as he could. The huge beanstalk fell. That was the last time Jack ever saw the giant. Thank you. How can I ever repay you? Well, you can come live with me and I won't ever force you to play or sing songs if you don't want to. The harp was very happy with this and so was Jack's mother when she saw the magical singing harp. People came from miles around to hear its music. With the hen and the harp, Jack and his mother lived very well and they were never hungry again. The end. It don't know big hearts away, but hearts away. Northern lights will die.